Hello once again, and if you haven't seen my videos before, I'm Scott Florence, and now it's time to find out why, according to Albert Einstein, energy is the same as mass times the speed of light squared, or in other words, why E equals mc squared. Now it's only right if we look at the history of Albert Einstein before we start talking about this. Albert Einstein was born on the 14th of March 1879 and is possibly the most famous physicist there ever has been. He worked in a patent office and he also won a Nobel Prize, but most likely not for what you're thinking he won it for now, as it wasn't for his work in relativity. And he also participated in a warning for the US that prompted the United States of America to build the first nuclear bomb during World War II. All of this is very well and good, but the reason that Einstein discovered why E equals mc squared is because of his work in relativity. Now Einstein came up with two theories of relativity, special relativity involving speed, the perception of time, mass and length, and also general relativity which got people thinking of gravity as a property of space. But in order to know about this we need to look at the work of James Clerk Maxwell, who was a Scottish physicist and mathematician, and if it were not for him, the world may be a very different place today. Maxwell contributed to the world of science in many different ways, and what Einstein looked at most eagerly was Maxwell's work with electromagnetism, which led Einstein to think of time as another dimension, and the importance of the speed of light being constant whether you're travelling towards it or away from it. Einstein is most famous for his work in relativity, and rightly so. If it were not for Einstein, we would not have technology such as GPS systems. I'll explain that some other time, but you are here to find out why E equals mc squared, so let's have a look at that. For us to find out why this is the case, we need to be aware that according to Einstein's special relativity, as we move faster, lengths start to decrease, meaning that space starts to shrink, time slows down and our mass increases. And if we travel at the speed of light, our mass will be infinite and lengths will be infinitesimally small, and time itself will stop. However, from our perspective, time would seem to be ticking normally. Now I should warn you, here comes some maths, so let's go to the whiteboard. Now I said before that mass, space and time all change depending on your speed. And for all of them, we do the same thing to the speed and we call the thing that we end up with gamma. And gamma is just the number that's calculated. Gamma is just the thing that's calculated by doing 1 minus the square of the speed that you're travelling at, so the square of the velocity, divided by the square of the speed of light and then all of that you take the square root of it. And that tells us exactly how these things change whether it's the time that passes, the size of space, your mass. Say when you're completely still the l amount of time that passes I'm going to write as a t with a little zero there but the time that passes while you're moving is different so I'm going to say that that's t with a small v here to say that it's the time that passes when you're moving at a velocity. Now the way that you calculated the time when you're moving at a velocity is you just times the time that passes while you're still by the root of 1 minus the velocity squared over the speed of light squared. And the way that gamma is written is it tends to be just that. And the same sort of thing that we just did to time applies with lengths. So say that's the length of something while you're moving, that is the same as the length of something while you're still multiplied by gamma, which is the same as the length of something while you're still multiplied by the root of 1 minus the velocity squared, all divided by the speed of light squared. Now that's fairly simple, you do the same thing to both of them to find out how much time passes while you're moving compared to when you're still, or the lengths of things while you're moving compared to when you're still. Now for mass it's slightly different, because when we're moving we can't go faster than the speed of light, so this number here is always going to be less than 1. The highest that that can possibly be is when your speed is 0, meaning that this value of gamma will be 1. And any faster than 0 meters per second that you travel will cause gamma to decrease, meaning that the time that passes for you will start to decrease compared to while you're standing still. But I said before that mass doesn't decrease, it in fact increases, and that means to work out the mass while you're moving, yes that's right, my pen did just run out, you need to divide the mass 
of something while you're still by gamma. But this is where it starts to get interesting, because if we go back to writing it as the mass of something while you're still, divided by the root of 1 minus the velocity squared over the speed of light squared, we can start to simplify that, because for most of the time, our velocities are not anywhere near the speed of light. So our velocity squared divided by the speed of light squared is always going to be a very, very small number that's much less than one, but it's still going to be more than zero. And luckily for us, there's a rule that allows us to simplify that when this here is very, very small, but more than zero. And that rule is when you have the root of one minus a number, you can change that to one minus half of that number when that number is very small, which for most of the time it is. So that lets us simplify this to the mass while you're still divided by one minus half of the velocity squared divided by the speed of light squared. But really, you'd like it to be simpler than that, wouldn't you? And yet again, there's another wonderful rule that we can use because while this number here is very small, which it is going to be because this number was small and this is just half of it. We can yet again simplify it because when one number divided by one minus another number, while that other number is very small, much less than one but still more than zero, that means that we can simplify it so that it's the first number multiplied by one plus the second number, which when we do it to this, we get to the mass while we're still multiplied by one plus half of the velocity squared divided by the speed of light squared. Now just let me clean up this board. Now just to recap, what we have is m naught is the mass of u while you're just sat there, mv is the mass of u while you're moving, v being the speed, and c is the speed of light. And what we've managed to simplify it down to so far is the mass of you moving is approximately the same as the mass of you while you're still multiplied by one plus half of your speed squared divided by the speed of light squared. And if we times that out, some of you may be able to see that we're already pretty much there. Because what we can do now is we can times everything by this speed of light squared meaning that we have the mass of you moving multiplied by the speed of light squared is the same as the mass of you while you're still times the speed of light squared plus half of the mass of you still multiplied by your velocity squared. And look at that, we already have two mc squareds, only they're talking about slightly different things. This one here is talking about mc squared while you're still, and this one here is talking about mc squared while you're moving. And the only difference between these two is this over here, half mv squared, which many of you will probably know is what is known as your kinetic energy, is the energy that you have so that you can move. And we know that this is a type of energy here, as this is measured in joules. And seeing as these are both going to have the same units, as they are both a mass times the speed squared, these both must also be measured in joules. And joules is a type of energy. So seeing as the difference between your energy while you're moving and the energy of you while you're still is approximately the same, ignoring the kinetic energy, we can just remove the kinetic energy and remove mc squared off while you're moving so that we can say that your energy while you're just sat there is the same as your mass while you're not moving times the speed of light squared. And there we have it, E equals mc squared. Now remember this though, the way we came to this answer is we used two approximations and these approximations both apply only when your speed is very small, meaning that the, your speed squared divided by the speed of light squared, despite it being more than zero, it must be much much less than one. And only when that is true does E actually equal mc squared. Hopefully I didn't lose too many of you, but nevertheless if you have any questions about anything that I've talked about here, please do comment down below and I will make an effort to answer them all.
Also, if you have any suggestions of what videos I should do next, either message me or comment down below. Remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.